超月シール携帯変化つくよみ式リボルビングキャノン投資をインタビューカウント大事Good morning, FGO fans. My goodness, it's Sunday, July 3rd, 5 49 a.m. right now. I did not expect this.、Um, we expected this servant to be coming soon. I don't think a lot of us expected it to happen uh, uh, this day, but、um, here we are. Minamoto no Tame Tomo. Wow. <laughs> Here we go.、Uh, I'm excited to go into this servant. I'm excited to, to dive into this kit, but I'm going to tell you right now this is a damage machine. Quite literally, a machine. But let's see what he has to offer. So, this is Minamoto no Tame Tomo. Double arts, double buster kit. Four hits on the buster, three hits on the arts and quick each, and five hits on the extra. A heavy for an archer, star rate of 156. Typically, it's around 150.、Uh, his is at 156. It is the highest among SSR Buster archers. What you're going to see in this kit is a whole lot of damage. It's a whole lot of damage. I will tell you right up front, he is double coin sky capable. As we dive into the kit here, the first skill here, five turn cooldown. It's Buster up three times over three turns, 30 to 50%、um, at a higher than normal star weight for an archer, plus 20 to 30% critical damage up and Buster on that first skill. That's already. Looking good damage wise, right there.、Um, important to note about that first skill any Buster card will trigger that. So, whether you are NPing with Buster,、um, if he follows up with face cards, if it is a Buster card, then you will lose one of those times. However, on the other side of that coin, if you can avoid doing that、um, in the Double Coin Sky system, you can definitely have two of those、uh, skills applied going at the same time. So, 30 to 50%, let's say 50% at level 5 for Double Coin Sky system. You're looking at 100% buster up on the final wave right there. Going on to the second skill here, this is his battery.、Uh, it's 20 to 30%. This is a six turn cooldown, but it's also a Guts one time over three turns, 1000 to 2000 HP. And when Guts is triggered, he applies an NP damage up buff of 10 to 20%. It lasts one time over three turns. He also cleanses his own debuffs.、Uh, pretty solid, probably a little bit niche. Uh, but the battery is guaranteed to hit, so、uh, this will be what you'll probably look to level first anyway. With it being 20 to 30%, so 30% at level 10, the six turn cooldown means that this is double coin sky compatible. So, on this third skill,、uh, it's, it seems pretty simple when you look at the first and the third aspects of it, and then you see the middle and it gets a little convoluted. My Discord and I had to talk about it pretty extensively. So, it's a five turn sure hit, no big deal. Seven turn cooldown. Uh, and then five turns of NP gauge per turn, five to 10%. Again, no big deal. Pretty straightforward. Then we get to this trigger skill per turn. Every turn, he will give himself an NP damage up buff that scales from 10 to 20%. Each individual instance of these will have a one time over five turn usage period. Every time that he NPs during that time, he will consume however many of those trigger skill buffs are applied to him. However, the trigger skill per turn perseveres over the five turns that it lasts. So let's say he uses this on the first turn, he waits another couple of turns, then he NPs, and then another turn goes by. He will then gain another NP damage up buff. The trigger skill lasts five turns. Each individual instance of NP damage up is one time over five turns, and the number of stacks that are currently on him when he goes to NP while this is active will be consumed. Multiply that times whatever this skill level is, and you have your NP damage up buff. It's a little bit wonky, it's a little bit、uh, indirect, I would say, when it comes to applying NP damage up. However, if you look at this in a vacuum, on paper here, it is essentially 100% NP damage up that requires obviously some planning, requires some strategic、uh, usage of when his NP is going to go off, etc.、Um, but it's five turns. The challenge quest usage here or potential、uh, is certainly very strong. On the NP here, there's a lot to talk about. It's got Ignore Invincible, it's got Ignore Defense. He also has a single turn of Buster Up of 20% if he is on a shore.、Uh, if the field is a shore, then he can get that extra 20%. He will deal super effective damage against lawful enemies. 300 to 500%, add in the super effective, it's 150, scales with overcharge, as you can see. All in all, what you see here is an extremely powerful kit. There's a lot of damage tucked away in this servant's kit. It's very clear what he wants to do. He wants to buster NP 
as often as he can. Uh, this is this is a powerhouse. Remember the sure hit on the third skill. It's five turns. Then you have ignore invincible and ignore defense. He's going to hit his mark and he's going to hit it hard. On his passives, he has independent action B, which is an 8% critical damage up that does matter. Again, he has higher than average star weight for an archer. The third append skill is anti-berserker. This guy is just going to deal a lot of damage to a lot of different enemies. There's another aspect of this guy's kit that is actually really attractive as well, and it's on the materials. So the ascension mats and skill mats are both very reasonable, very reasonable as you can see here. Um, you're looking at eight crystals, 10 gears, nine black beast grease, and 12 arrowheads for ascension only. When it comes to his skills, 15 gears per skill, 15 crystals per skill, 15 cores per skill, and then 24 arrowheads to go from level eight to nine. Obviously, you're going to want to level that second skill first. It's the battery, 20 to 30%. With the cooldown that it has, again, that will make you double coin sky system buster meta enabled. So although his vanilla skills are honestly pretty accessible when it comes to materials, his append skills are a much different story. Uh, nine claws, nine black piece grease. That's fine. We expect that kind of thing from append skills. 72 bullets, 72 ashes per a pen skill. His bond CE, although cool, and although it does fit his niche of 20% up against lawful enemies, um, this is a double coin sky, a buster meta looking servant. Most people are not going to look to use this for him. Um, if you do use it, the lawful enemies are going to pay for it. However, this is largely going to be a piece of memorabilia when it comes to getting him to bond 10. Overall, in my opinion, Minamoto is a very good servant. He has one clear goal in mind, and that is to hit extremely hard on his Buster NP. Yes, he can hit hard with Buster crits. That's fine. Um, and yes, he has survivability with his guts as well. But it all feeds into that Buster NP hitting as hard as it can. He wants to be in the Buster meta. He wants to dish it out, not only with Buster NPs, but with Buster crits as well due to that first skill. He does have three of the four aspects of multiplicative damage. He lacks attack up or defense down, but honestly, lacks is a little bit of a loose term when it comes to this kit. There's so much Buster up capability. There's so much NP damage up capability as well. Not to mention the lawful enemy alignment, super effective damage power mod. One thing to note, uh, he doesn't have evade or invincible defense up, damage cut, buff remove, resist, etc. Um, that largely doesn't matter for most of what he's going to be used for. He does also have a guts on his second skill. But what I thought was interesting is that on his third skill, those are five turn buffs, five turns of sure hit, five turns of MP gauge per turn. You are looking at a potential challenge quest servant here, if not for sheer damage potential, uh, but at least for the fact that he has a guts and very high capability to not only crit, but hit hard on his Buster NP as well. So overall, this is a good saw. He's, he's, he's good. He's not um, going to break the game, which I think is fine. Although they did release another Buster AoE SSR Archer, he has found a way to carve a niche immediately. He may not have the most utility out of all servants that you'll come across, but my goodness, can he dish out the damage and he can last a little bit longer than usual with his guts as well. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. It would help me out a ton as a newer YouTube channel. Uh, interesting servant. A lot of interesting servants of late. I love doing these new servant review videos. Feel free to check out my other ones. I'm trying to improve every single time I do them. So your comments are appreciated. If you want, check us out on Twitch, Twitter, and Discord as well. Once again, really appreciate you. Have fun with this servant. Um, you <laughs> You're going to have fun with the damage numbers, that's for sure. Um, and although I don't speak about the aesthetics in this video series, uh, very unique and very intricately detailed and designed servant. Honestly, looks like they did a pretty good job with this one. Thanks so much again. Take care of yourselves. Later. So although he is a Buster AoE SSR Archer, like a few others are, um, they still found... I don't even know what I was saying. I don't even know what I was saying. I, I really don't. I don't even know what I was saying. I don't. I have no idea. No idea what I was saying. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, fits in the future meta, right? This is fucking wordy. I'm just talking, dude. I'm just talking. Um, he stands out not only in design, but also in damage capability. Um... Uh, Oh god, dude. It's just all garbage. It's all fucking shit, man. Oh, uh, why did they have to do this today? Fuck, man. It's fucking Sunday of a holiday weekend, and I know it's not their holiday.
God damn it. All right. If this had been a Buster AoE SSR Archer, I don't know what we would have done. What am I saying, dude? Like, what the fuck am I saying? What am I saying? What have, I've said everything, right? I said everything. So just like wrap it up, okay? All right. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate this. Hopefully, no, no.